So it's the Monday after an Eagles loss, and I got to ask y'all something. Am I overreacting or normally reacting when I say Jonathan Gannon got to go? This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. And today, you got to let me know if I am overreacting when I say Jonathan Gannon got to go. And I understand it was a three-point deficit, last-second field goal against a 4-3 and three Charger team. But what we saw in defense is kind of what I said would happen when Jonathan Gannon goes against good quarterbacks. I thought maybe because he was on a two-game skid that we could treat him like the Golfs and the uh, Ryans and the Darnolds and the Garoppolo's even. But nope, good quarterback, B-plus, cooks this scheme. Before we get into it, Eagle Nation, hit that like button for your boy. Subscribe if you are new and ding that notification bell so you know when we drop these videos. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, Eagle Nation. We reached 15K last night. I would have loved to be celebrating 15K with a dub and the arrow pointing up. And the offense deserves some kudos. We're going to talk about that. But Jonathan Gannon is not the D.C. that I want to see. He's not, right? We just got rid of Jim Schwartz, who played a little lax, a little off. This is to a new level, a new level. I was joking on Twitter. Follow your boy on Twitter, at Philly underscore Mike 25. I said, this is all we do. Some of these zones are just so far back. We just drop him back, drop him back into the heavens. You can't even see the safeties on your screen. You need two TVs. You need an extended version. You need the all-22 version to see some of these players. They're going back and back and back. And when you think we can't run any more zone, we still run it. We got like three plays. That's it. I mean, look at this. We are dropping Derek Barnett back. Look at this. Derek Barnett, look at the defensive end. The defensive end all the way to the left, the one closest to the 50 facing the bottom of the screen. Derek Barnett is going to run with a tight end, Jared Cook. He's running with a tight end, Jared Cook. That's an easy pitch and catch for 15. 15 yards, easy. Second and 10, Herbert. Boom. How do you even get a sack when you minus Barnett? And look how fast Herbert got this ball out. Look at this. Empty back set. We don't know what we're doing. Hike the ball. One, two, bang. Derek Barnett, coverage guy. We saw Fletch guarding running backs. Now we got Derek Barnett guarding tight ends. We got Zach McPherson in the game lined up in Timbuk two. Luckily, Herbert just missed them. Now the defense got two turnover on downs, one stopping the run and one stopping a pass. But I think it was more the Chargers just not executing than the Eagles' defense coming out and making a stop, right? The run defense was pretty good. That's just the guy saying, we're going to beat you up front. This scheme is not good. We thought Jim Schwartz was bad, but he played off, but he dropped people in the box. He blitzed once in a while. We were third in sacks. Javon Hargrave. And Fletch keep alluding to this. They keep talking about quarterbacks get the ball out of their hand too fast. Why? Because the linebackers are playing off. The cornerbacks are playing off. The quarterback, opposing quarterbacks, hike the ball, and there's going to be a guy in the middle or a guy on the outside that is open. It is pitch and catch for Derek Carr and Justin Herbert, who Derek Carr looked horrible against the Giants, and Justin Herbert against the Patriots defense and the Ravens defense, who brought pressure, looked bad. I said it on Friday. If you're a B-plus quarterback, this guy plays off. This guy plays nothing but zone. He will not blitz. He plays a defense that is the most vanilla defense in the league. Like, this is what you teach this is what you play on Madden when you don't know how to play defense. You just pick a random zone, drop back, and just hope for the best. Hope for the best. 
That is what we're doing. We're dropping back in zone and just hoping for a mistake. Just hoping and praying for a mistake. And it gets worse. Let's look at some of this stuff, right? Let's look at some of this stuff. And this is disgusting right here when you look at how bad Gannon is in the first nine games, right? Look at this. Remember Juan Castillo, former offensive line coach, Andy Reid turned him into D.C. I don't know what was going on. But in the first nine games, look at this. Average passing yards against Castillo's better, 236 to 220. Rushing yards against is tied at 120. First down allowed, Castillo only 19, Gannon 23. Turnovers forced, not even one a game, 0.9 compared to Castillo, 1.6. Punts forced, 3.3 to 4.7. Points allowed, 24 to 22. Completion percentage, 75 to 57. And quarterback rate in 100 to 85. Juan Castillo, an offensive line coach who became a D.C., who was a one-and-done, a one-and-done D.C., is better than Jonathan Gannon. And let's look at even worse stats. Even worse. I mean, it is bad. Shout out to Jeff S. Can't say his name. The Eagles defensive rankings. Worst in the league against completion percentage. Most missed tackles. Most first downs allowed. We're bending and bending and bending. Tied for the most red zone touchdowns allowed. So. Oh, but we're bending, but we're not going to break. Nope, we are breaking. We are literally breaking in half. Crack. Tied for the most red zone touchdowns allowed. Most first downs allowed. Let's go back. Read them already. Second most rush first downs allowed. Third most penalties. Third fewest blitzes. And third most points allowed at home. Where do we go from here? Where do, how, how do we get players that are good to come here because they know they're going to die in the system? They're going to die. We don't use nobody to their strength. We're ruining people, and it's mainly the scheme, right? Jeff killed it with these stats. Jim Schwartz didn't blitz that much, but he timely blitzed. I understand that people will say we don't got the personnel. If we blitz, we're going to get beat over the top. But we're getting beat at an alarming rate by everything else. So if you're dying by one sword, what's the difference to see how it looks? And if you die by a new sword, the end result is you died anyways. I'd rather switch up and be aggressive and just get beat mano y mano than just to sit back lollygagging around and allowing a team to just do whatever they want. You're pretty much just watching the game instead of calling the game. If you get beat in one play, it is what it is. Defense gets off the field, they get their breath. To get beat in 13 plays, to sometimes come right back out because the offense struggles at times throughout the season is just ridiculous. We are breaking records for Eagles history and the NFL history with how bad this defense is. Just absolutely garbage. 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 One more time. Derek Barnett, don't go after the quarterback. I need you to drop back. Where's the dime package here? Look at this. Disgusting. And that might have been a false start by the uh, left guard. Look at it again. Pay attention to the left guard now. The left guard for the Chargers. Boom. Ah, that might have been. But disgusting. It was pitch and catch all night. Without the turnover on downs, if Brandon Staley was playing it safe, that would have been two field goals, two easy field goals because they were inside our territory. You know what I mean? Not one time did they punt the ball. And Derek Barnett is Derek Barnett. Third and six penalty, just absolutely foolishness. He has more penalties and sacks this year and in his career. He got four penalties this year, one sack. He got 20-plus penalties and, like, 19 sacks in his career. It's disgusting. Disgusting. For Jonathan Gannon to be worse than a one-and-done Juan Castillo, for Jonathan Gannon to be top three in every bad category is just absolutely disgusting. Uh, we in nine minutes in, and I do want to talk about Hurts' progression a little bit. This is something that people say he can't do, stay in the pocket and throw in the middle. 
and it's one play, but it's a pretty play. And I like the fact that if we see more of this going to the end of the season, well, then you know he is learning slowly but surely. Now we got to see this more, and he has still hit the panic button and stuff. But I think Jalen played a heck of a game. The Goddard pass was unfortunate, uh, and definitely the Devontae Smith pass. But you can overcome things in the first quarter. This the second quarter blunders, which he didn't have. He took care of the ball. He used his legs when he needed to, and he made some dots down the field, two receivers in the second half. First half, struggled a little bit. But that was not why we lost the game. Allowing a team not to punt and allowing a team to complete 80-plus percent of their passes is why you lose games. But again, look at this. Dropping back. No panic. Stays in the pocket. Throws in the middle. And I can't show the whole play. You know what I mean? But that is what you want to see. That is progression. That is progression. Now, he has to do it more often. He has to start getting consistent with it. But throwing in the middle and staying in the pocket is something he doesn't do well. And he did it there. And then the playmaker came in in the second half. So, like I said, I criticize him in the play-by-plays when he misses a play. You hear me. It is what it is. We live it in the moment. But, you know, he definitely gives maximum effort. And right now, with Jonathan Gannon as a D.C., you can spend three first-round picks on defense. Without with him being there, they're going to make them look stupid. Uh, but I do think the defense need to be fixed more than the quarterback, especially with this quarterback class being not as heavy. Now, I know some of y'all are trying to sell me on Pickett and Corral, and I'm going to do my research on them pretty soon, you know. I've been trying to catch a game or two when I can. Um, We're going to talk about it. Like I said, it's all about the shield. Uh, but Jonathan Gannon is on my number one hit list. Nick Sirianni is showing that he's getting better. He, he, he's understanding the game. I would like to see more actual play action, right? Now you're running the ball. Now they're putting eight in the box. Now you play action off that, right? So the passes that Jalen Hurts were doing were more just regular dropbacks. Now is when I want to see you play action because they're dropping eight in the box. They are looking to attack. Fake it, make them attack, and make it easier for Jalen. This team played pretty darn good on offense, right? We hung with the Chargers, 27-24. We didn't get blown out. It's the way Jonathan Gannon looked in losing, right? We know. I knew he was going to revert back to that because Herbert is a B-plus quarterback. If you are a B-plus quarterback, we play far off. We pretty much watch you play instead of game plan for you. And uh, Nick Sirianni is going to have to stop saying I co-signed the defense and it's me first. Go into the room. and What do you think Nick Sirianni could do to his defense, right? I guarantee you if Jonathan Gannon was a defensive coordinator with that side, if we could get assimilation of Nick Sirianni's offense versus Jonathan Gannon's defense, Nick Sirianni, Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, they will cook him. They will cook him. Just tell him to stop. Tell him to do something different. Whether you lose by it or not, it's something different. You can't keep doing the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and respect and expecting different results. Bro, you don't you do one thing against C plus quarterbacks and below and a whole different thing. Stop being scared of them. The players ain't. You are. Stop it. With all that being said, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section when it comes to this loss. Again, 27-24 on the surface. You know, it looks like we played a good game, but at the end of the day, you couldn't watch that defense and feel good. Every single time the Chargers got the ball, whether it's a 99-yard drive, a 45-yard drive, a 70-yard drive, 13-play drive, they did whatever they want. And when he didn't, when he dropped the pass, it was because Herbert overthrew him. Four of his, two of his four incompletions were just legit bad throws. A couple deflections by Marcus Epps, who deserves... He should be starting over Anthony Harris, to be honest. Let's just, it is what it is at this point. Anthony Harris is trash. Marcus Epps is one of the, the, the most energetic guys on his defense. And it's sad to say. Sad to say. Slay was getting cooked a little bit, but, you know, some of them... Plas- that one deep pass to Mike Williams was just too, too perfect of a pass. He was on his hip pocket, but it is what it is. Slay got bullied around by 89... Leave all your thoughts in the comment section. I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. I will have Dave Spadaro on the, on the pod tomorrow. Tuesday, Dave Spadaro is coming on. Let me know your thoughts. We out.